Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all, y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on a Las Vegas rapper that solved a murder case after confessing to everything in a music video. Saturday, September 18th, 2021. The Las Vegas police responded to a call for a man down at an apartment complex on the northwest side of the city. It was 6.33 p.m. when officers arrived on scene, locating 32-year-old Randall Wallace with a gunshot to the head, pronouncing him dead where he laid. No witnesses immediately came forward, and in the days that followed, news stations would report Randall had been involved in a fight with three unidentified people prior to being shot dead. Detectives would pull surveillance video from the area, capturing a white Chevy Malibu driving away from the scene after the shooting, as word spread a black male was the one that fled in the vehicle. A relative of the victim would also come forward, stating people believed Randall was with someone who was the actual target, something an anonymous source would also later tell a detective. The following month, Detectives received a call from one of the previous witnesses stating they had more information but didn't want to be labeled a snitch. Detectives were able to coerce the witness into identifying the possible suspect by his street name, Toxic. The name Toxic was then sent to the gang unit who put together a list of potential suspects in the city that went by that name. Detectives would find interest in a man named Ken Juan McDaniel, whose records showed he not only went by the name Toxic, but his criminal history included a robbery conviction and several arrests, one of which was for a 2018 quadruple shooting at an overnight party near Boulevard Mall in Las Vegas just days before Christmas. A shooting that left four people hurt. They say it happened around one this morning near the Boulevard Mall. Investigators say the shooting stemmed from a party at the nearby Rex Center. Everyone involved has non life threatening injuries. Police are now also searching for that suspect. With a violent history and a matching name, it would be Toxic's relationship that truly grabbed the attention of detectives as they realized his girlfriend owned a 2013 white Chevy Malibu, the same vehicle that fled the murder scene. Without any actual evidence, the murder case of Randall Wallace would go cold for roughly the next two years before a rapper seemingly solved the case. On July 19th, 2023, a video would be posted to YouTube titled Fade Free by a rapper named The Biggest Finn 4800. The video would catch the attention of a homicide detective as the first line of the song is, I'm the reason why you dead. He'd continue on with lyrics like, park the car, double back on feet, the smartest way to slide. Drove in, double lock your man, make sure you get your bod. Now while these lyrics may sound like recycled lines from any other rapper, it's literally his first few lines that essentially heated up the cold case of Randall Wallace. I'm the reason why you dead, your partner's bitches, message to that midget. Come to find out, Randall Wallace went by the nickname Midget, referring to his small stature. As the song details Pac and Akan running back on feet after the shooting, detectives realized Toxic was detailing Randall's murder with facts that were never released to the public on how it went down. Detectives now believe they were watching a cocky killer give a full confession, as he even said, still celebrating while his mama cry. Three months before the music video dropped, ATF agents made contact with the Las Vegas police after recovering a 9mm handgun in Los Angeles. Ballistic testing would confirm this was the murder weapon used to kill Randall Wallace and the original purchaser would be none other than the former girlfriend of Ken Juan McDaniel, AKA Toxic, AKA Big Finn 4800. With unreleased details of the murder and reenacted elements of Randall's death in the music video consistent with evidence at the scene, along with a murder weapon tracing back to the suspect, a murder warrant was executed on August 29th, 2023, and Toxic was placed under arrest at his home. 
Charged with open murder with a deadly weapon, the courts will end up deciding by jury whether the case should be first degree, second degree, or potentially voluntary or involuntary manslaughter. Toxic was also charged with violating his probation, stemming from the quadruple shooting in 2018, and remains without bond. The Las Vegas police would issue a statement on the difficulties of this case and how a local rapper with a minuscule social media following confessed to the shooting. Randall Wallace's mom would take to Facebook posting a picture of her son's alleged killer with a heartfelt caption. She'd say, Toxic, even though you took my son's life, I forgive you. It's not up to me to judge. The thing that hurt me, you made the song like you had no remorse. You already took his life. You disrespected me saying that I was a mother that was crying. Yes, I was a mother that cried ever since September 18th. Randall's mom would continue saying, the young men that used to be at my house that you was beefing with, you wasn't beefing with my son. I haven't heard from none of them. Mrs. Wallace would make a reference that once again matches up the toxic song lyrics. Within the song he'd say, how you let them turn your mama's spot into a place they kick it. And it would seem Mrs. Wallace was aware she let Randall's friends hang at her house and they were the ones Toxic was really after, aligning with witness statements that Randall wasn't actually the target, but died for being around the wrong crowd. The saddest part would be Mrs. Wallace saying she hasn't heard from any of his friends since he died, except one. Even though she opened up her home, she now realized they didn't care for her or her son. They just used them for a place to kick it, and it eventually led to his death. This is what the rappers want to be like, talking about what they do until Trap Lord Ross drops a six-hour documentary on their life. And then they're like, oh, you saying too much, da-da-da-da-da. But they be in the song, literally reenacting the murder, thinking that nobody's going to hear this. Nobody's going to... I guarantee you, one of Randall's family members saw the video. It got sent to them. They sent it right to the police. The police looked at him. We're like, oh, we got him. He just admitted to everything. Do I think the punishment is going to be crazy severe? I don't think he's going to get first degree murder. They say it was a fight. If it's a fight, it's something that happened in the heat of the moment. I would see it more as second degree. They didn't say anything about him having a weapon. I highly doubt dude was getting beat up by a midget. So the whole manslaughter shit most likely isn't going to stick. I would assume he's going to get second degree murder followed by a life sentence. That's what I would think because there's an overwhelming amount of evidence. But then again, I don't know. Aside from the witnesses saying that, yeah, we heard it was somebody named Toxic, nobody identified him at the scene except for the vehicle that was traced to his girlfriend. The murder weapon was traced to the girlfriend but they don't have anything else like, hey, this was him at the scene. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it sounds like everything could be pointed at him, but with the right lawyer, it also sounds like he has room to make something happen. Whether it's get the charges reduced to something else, assault with a firearm. I'm not sure what the charges are out in Las Vegas and Nevada, but to be honest with you, they don't necessarily have him red-handed. They're going to try to use those lyrics, and he's going to fight that as much as possible with the whole, you know, out is out, rap is rap, whatever, whatever. I think they just had enough to initially charge him with murder. But as far as how sad the actual murder is, you can tell the mother is devastated. You know, in that post that she made, she opened up her home. Every hood has multiple women like this that embrace their son's friends and let everyone come inside. And yeah, you can stay on the couch. Yeah, I'm gonna make you some food. Yeah, go in the fridge. You know, my house, your house, da da da. She now realizes she was solely used for that purpose. Only one of his friends actually reached out to her. Sadly, that's how it goes in a lot of situations, especially when somebody dies. You know what I mean? And he, he took a headshot 
after whoever was allegedly shooting at somebody that he was with. It's fucked up. It's a sad situation. It's a reality of being around the wrong people. Nobody ever said that he was out there gang banging, going crazy. You look at his Instagram, it seems like he was a construction worker. But when you're around certain people that are doing certain things, just like the song lyrics say, you let them kick it at your mother's house. You became a part of that situation by hanging out with them and you fell victim to it. But rest in peace to the victim in this case. Y'all let me know y'all's thoughts and comments in the comments section. Do you think he's gone, dead to rights, he's red-handed, confessed to everything? Or do you think that he might have the ability to beat this case? It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.